Tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and today I have a vlog to show you some stash busting granny square blankets. So I hope wherever you are in the world that you're safe and that you're healthy and that you've got enough supplies. Times are crazy right now and I'm not going to go into it all because I know crochet time is escape time. So I just hope wherever you are that you're all right. I have been making a lot of granny squares. You all know me, you know that when I'm in a time of need I make a lot of granny squares and I have got stacks of them. And I figured that as pretty much the entire world is on some sort of lockdown or self distancing, um, self isolation, social distancing, that most of us would be turning to our stash right now. Um, to make projects so I'm just gonna caveat it now and say this is not me saying don't spend money if you've got money and you want to buy yarn do it don't be led by me I'm just saying for anyone that has been hoarding yarn forever and a day this is your time to use it up and I will add in that I do want to order some more yarn um, to join a couple of projects but I'm just putting it out there if you've got money to spend, spend it. If you need to save your money, save it. Do you boo. Right now, we are gonna do some stash busting granny square projects. You can order yarn to make them too. Okay, so, where to start? I have a lot of double knit acrylic um, scraps, odds and ends, half skeins, random skeins, um, not nothing really, not a lot that I could make like a blanket and then all be the same um, granny square. So I have got around me lots of different granny squares that you could try making um, just by simply diving into your stash. So I really hope that I inspire you. Also head over to um, Pinterest. I have boards on there as does probably most of the world. Um, it's a great source of inspiration. I am going to start with the granny squares that I am doing as part of my hashtag HDDC granny calm. So when I officially started working from home, I decided I was going to make a granny square a day for however long this period of time lasts. And so I have got this so far. So if you use the hashtag on uh, Instagram, HGDC Granny Calm, it will bring up my progress on this and it will also bring up the rest of the tribe that are posting Granny Square um, pictures throughout this time. It can be any Granny Square, any you see here, any you dream up yourself. This is what I've decided for me because I got a lot of projects. Um, so every day I am picking colours and I'm doing a five round Granny Square and I'm doing a simple join as you go. I will put up the top um, my tutorial for join as you go um, and I've decided to do it seven squares in width that's basically a week um, mine started on a Wednesday so I've got Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday today's Saturday I am currently working on Saturday square to add to it, I've just chucked my yarn. Chucked my yarn? Chucked or dropped my yarn? That was supposed to be. Um, and then every Sunday when my church does their live stream, I've decided that I will sit and sew my ends in so that this doesn't get out of control. So I did Wednesday to Sunday, uh, Sunday gone, and then tomorrow I will do again Wednesday to Sunday. I have just decided to pick random colours. If you go back and watch the live that I did last week, which I totally enjoyed by the way, and I hope you that did, and thank you for everyone that joined in, it was great. Um, more on that after. I did a three round granny square. It was the purple, the blue, well the lilac, the blue, and the grey. And then I was like, three, three rounds is just not enough. Like I need a bit more time to get into it to feel a little bit calmer. Um, and then during that live I said to everyone, oh, I don't know, I might frog this, I might make bigger ones, 
just don't know what to do. Um, and then everyone said just keep with it and I'm really glad they did because I'm really enjoying it and I'm really liking it and it's gonna look great. So every day I go up to my yarn stash and my two pots of DK yarn I basically open on the floor. I can just take the lids off if need be. I keep putting them on. I'm a bit like I don't want dust and germs to get in my arm but then I'm like I'm home alone there's not really much dust and there's no germs. Anyway these times are weird um, and I just pick out five colours so I just before setting up I went upstairs and I picked out these five. This one is going to be the centre and that's going to be the outer colour. Uh, there we go. Um, and I, true to form, want it to look like they were randomly picked, but I very, very carefully pick my colours. My rule, my general rule, to make it look like they have just been thrown in there without a care, is to not have the same colour touching. So, in this square, I have got white, the glitter pink, bright pink, grey, like slate grey and glitter black and in the squares surrounding this one, so this one, this one, this one, this one and this one, none of those colours will be used. Um, it means that you spend a fair bit of time faffing and picking colours but it gives you that thrown together effect that I really really like. Um, I don't mind the faffing of picking out the colours because this is a steady project and I'm just adding to it day by day and it's actually really enjoyable and I'm really liking it. Um, as I get further over here I will add a bit more red in and same with down here. It's looking really good and I actually came to realisation that I love granny squares but I don't have like that many granny square blankets so totally have given myself permission to make as many as I want. So that's one example of inspiration for you. You can make um, granny squares as many rounds as you like with whatever colours you've got. I mean if you lined all of these colours up together they don't go but this looks really really good. And then because I'm doing the join as you go I don't need a joining colour because I am just slip stitching them together in effect which means I don't need to wait till I get a joining colour for example which one can you see this blanket is put together with all black and I don't have a huge chunk of colour in my stash right now so this is one way to get around needing a joining colour just join them as you go it does need blocking because the squares don't look straight so that's example number one. Example number two, you could just quite simply go for block colours like this. So I have made these squares for a blanket that I'm part way through putting together. And I have just picked colours and I have made four of each of that one. And I'm going to put them together in a pattern. This works really well if you've got um, a colour palette, like a stash of yarn that works really well together. Um, if you want it to look a bit more of a blended, melded um, project, that works really, really well. And you can do all sorts of colour spectrums with that. For these, I've gone for one, two, three, four, five, six rounds, and I'm going to mattress stitch them together so they'll be sewn together with a seam an invisible seam like so I've never done that before so I'm going to learn that and I might make a tutorial I'm not promising anything because I don't always get round to these things I just want to crochet so that's another thing that you could do and then you could have loads of fun organizing these into a pattern you could do um, like an ombre effect, you could have like diagonal blocks, you could do quilted effect patterns, there are so many possibilities. So if your stash is a little bit more of a gradient or more um, complementary, you could do something like this. If your stash is a bit wild, you could do something like this. 
There's also, so this one as another inspiration has the block joining colour. Now if you have for example 600 grams of acrylic or whichever whichever yarn you're using whatever weight you have but say you have a lump of it say 400 to 600 grams of one color you could join an entire blanket in that one color so this obviously isn't a blanket unless it's for a doll but as an example you could make a series of squares like I've done here and then join them together and also if you look closely on this one the second round is also the same colour throughout and it just gives it a cohesion and again it just depends on what stash you've got and what sort of uh, vibe you're going for but it is really good fun to play with these you could also if you really wanted to do this and then do it again in another colour so for example you could have the same colour centres but the second round could be a darker pink and then the joining colour could be white and then you could put those blocks together and you could make a really big blanket like that. You, there's so many possibilities available. There's so many granny square blankets that you can make or cushions. Um, so you could give that a go. These colours are actually in my granny square curtain. This was a, um, like a prototype that I was playing with of maybe having all of the second rounds the same colour and then I decided just to go with two rounds. This is great for using up odds and ends of um, stash. So if you've just got small amounts, sort of five grams, 10 grams, you can make a couple of centers out of them, no problem. And then you can use a yarn that you've got a little bit more of for the second round, and then the one that you've got the most of is the third round. So get creative, have a look at what you've got. Um, most of these centres wear what I call yarn bath. So you know when you go through your tubs like this or wherever you keep your yarn in your project bags and you pull it all out and then you work on something and then you rip it out and you leave it and then you just get like this great big tangle. I call that yarn bath and I have sat and sort of undone, untangled a lot of that and then the little bits have become centres for this, for my two round granny square curtain and my new two round granny square blanket that I've started so it's a great stash buster you're just using odds and ends and also undoing yarn is actually really really calming for your mind and I don't know about you but because I know I don't have places to go right now all these little jobs that I always was like I don't have time for that I'll do that another time suddenly I have time for and I'm actually quite enjoying them so if you have a tangle of yarn bath, untangle it, create yourself a project and look, it's basically something for nothing, so do it. So that's another inspiration for you. I've got another one here. Now, avid watchers will recognise this as part of a panel of my granny square jumper. Do not fear, I've took it apart because I am in the process of grading this so that I can release it as a pattern for testing. And so it meant taking parts of it down um, and redoing it. And I'm fine with that because I love this colour and I'm really looking forward to having it in my wardrobe. Oh yes. Now this one, again, the joining colour is all the same, but the central squares are completely different. Um, one, two, three. They are four round granny squares as opposed to the two rounds that they are basically with the joining colour. These are three rounds with the joining colour. And you can see the difference it makes in the size of the granny squares. If you can put multiple rounds on, go for it. It means more ends, but it means a quicker project. So you can just pick out any random colour. I mean, these colours shouldn't go. I've got Yep, the pinks and purples go really nicely. Then I've got like this turquoise with like a neon orange. Um, there's Tiffany blue up there. That one is actually, it's khaki, but it just looks murky right now. Um, so that's another thing that you can do. And as I said, you can make multiple blocks like this and put them together. 
you could easily join these as you go. If you make another block the exact same size, you can join them as you go, or you can seam them together, it's up to you. But look how great that looks. And you wouldn't need that many of them to make quite a substantial blanket size. I think if you made eight of these, you'd be well on your way to a really decent snuggle blanket size. Snuggle. <laughs> so that's another flash of inspiration for you. That won't become a blanket for me, but I do want to make a three round blanket. I do want to make a two round blanket. I do want to make all the blankets. <laughs> I've got to pick them up. <gasps> okay, let's put these ones out of harm's way. My next inspiration, I'm going to go down here to these, is this wadge of squares. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, so again, if you've watched the live, you will know that this is my enough blanket. Um, it is inspired by a picture that I found on Pinterest and I've actually found out that the owner or the maker of the blanket is Meet Me at Mike's on Instagram um, and I have followed her profile since forever so she had a blog, probably still has a blog, back in the day when I started crocheting when I was like 22, 21, 8 or 9 years ago um, and she was like making really nice funky traditional but modern projects with like amazing colours and she was one of my biggest inspirations and so it's kind of really cool how it's come back full circle and I've come back to make a blanket and she's inspired yet another blanket. Um, she's running a cal at the moment, a crochet along for the blanket squares. Um, I think she's done maybe, I think my centre block is slightly smaller or slightly bigger by one round. Other than that it's the same and I just used the pitch that I found on Pinterest. Um, so if you go over to her profile meet me at Mike's um, and tell her I sent you because I think she's amazing. She's running a cal at the moment. Um, she doesn't look like she's crocheted in absolutely ages but then because of all of this that's going on she, um, she, <laughs> every time I say all of this that's going on I kind of feel like, you know in Harry Potter when they're like, he who shall not be named, like I feel like this is the equivalent for Earth, like don't name it but we're all thinking about it. Well anyway, um, she seems to have gone back to crocheting or in any case it's come back to her profile um, so she's running a cow for them so definitely jump on that if you want to and also whatever you granny squares you're making right now tag them with HDDC granny calm so I can see what granny squares you're making like I'm following the hashtag so I just want my feed to be flooded with beautiful granny squares so I am making these quite big squares um, they are definitely going to build up quicker than any of these projects. Again, I have just stash dived. So the whole premise for making this um, blanket was that my one word for 2020 is enough, that I have enough, that I am enough, and that I just want to use what I've got. And it's quite funny because, in a very uncanny way, because this is all going on, this that shall not be named, um, I am now really diving into my stash and I have really ma mapped out what projects I'm grading, what projects are being tested next, um, which projects are being edited next, and then what, um, which of the designs that I've already made the samples for do I want to start on, and what patterns that I've brought do I want to make, and what of my yarn stash am I using up. So, yes. They are huge squares like so and I've got a great big stack of them. They probably take me about 30 to 40 minutes to make each, so if you put a film on, you're gonna get at least two squares cranked out, which isn't bad. Um, so put a film on with the kids or whoever. It's gone really dark in here, hasn't it? Bear with. As I was saying, the sun's gone in and it's definitely going to rain and you know what YouTubers are like with their lighting. So I thought I'd just join in and sort my lighting out. Um, you can make a stack of these. I've made them a bit ski whiff now. I um, Originally I was going for 25 squares. I think now I've got like 19 
or 20 in the works because I've got a couple here to finish um, and I've decided I'm going to go bigger and make it 30 squares because why not go big or go home and I'm home so I'm going big um, and they just look so great at some point I am going to sew the ends in there's not that many I don't think it will take me too long and then these are going to be put to one side for a little while until I get the joining colour. Now there's a great big like vote going on. Do I join them in black like I originally wanted to or do I join them in mustard yellow? Because I made this square here with the yellow in it and it just made my heart sing. I just really like that yellow. And so then I got it in my head that I was going to join those squares with mustard yellow. And to be honest, I'm still leaning towards that now. So you could just dive into your stash. Um, once you've made one square, you'll be able to weigh how much you use for the centre, how much you use for that, and how much you use for your um, final round. You can use whatever colours you've, like, you've got and you like. So say you have loads of purple, you could make that colour the purple, or you could join them in purple. Whatever works for you, whatever's in your stash, go for it. I had quite a lot of white so I decided to do the final round in white and I feel like it really makes the squares pop and it will be a good contrast between um, the joining colour and the squares. That I'm running out of white so I might have to order a little bit more to finish some of the squares. Where did I put them? Hang on. Oh. Uh, I don't know it's a mystery but I had two squares on the go oh <laughs> got them I've got these two on the go um, that just needs the white and I played yarn chicken with this one and I lost so I just need to go into my scrap um, bin and see if I can find just the tiniest bit to get that finished and then they, they need the white going around them and then they're done um, when I am about to make a batch of these squares, I go into my yarn tubs and again I lay out the yarn that I'm going to use. So I will get, um, I've got an example here. I picked these out and I decided that's going to be the centre, that'll be the three rounds and then the white. And I would just line them up on the floor or wherever you can. If you can't leave them out, take a picture on your phone, put it back and just keep a couple with you and it just means that when I am watching a film or um, I was going to say out and about but I'm not out and about but you know what I mean if you were to be going somewhere you could just put a few of these in your project bag and then you can just pick them out or if you've left it a few days and you can't remember you go back into your phone and you can see what you've set out for yourself it means when you're making a film you don't have to get up to get more yarn like it's just there so it kind of becomes more of a mindless project because you're just reaching for the yarn. Speaking of the yarn, and you just work on it, which is great. Now this centre, I've done this twice now for some reason. Can't count. There we go. And then I have got one more project. Well, Granny Squares to inspire you. And it is a blanket that I was working on and has actually made it back to the whip queue to be finished. So let me show you. Oh, and a really, really good tip for you. When you start a project, take a picture of the project with the hook size that you're using. So that if you do walk away from it, when you come back, you know what you're working on. I really, 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 really want to get some stickers for my um, crochet journal so that I can just be like, stick the sticker on, whatever it is, whoever inspired me, the hook I'm using when I started it, because potentially this one here, which I'm using a 4.5 mil, so when I come on here and say, please tell me what hook I was using, 4.5, um, I'm going to put it down at some point until I get the joining colour which realistically won't be for a couple of months probably and then by then you come back and you think what hook size was I? what? and that can sometimes mean that this never gets done so take a picture or put it on your Ravelry 
or whatever it is that you do just note it down in some way sometimes I even go as far as getting like um, you know when you get a letter through and you're about to throw the envelope away I will write on the envelope like dear Heather you used a 4.5 mil hook for this and this is the date I'm writing this note when you get back to this enjoy doing it love me and then I'll put that in there and I have done that with a few blankets to make sure that I will know what hook I'm using when I get back to them and also if you put the date it means when you come back to your phone if you've taken any pictures of like stacks of colour you can find that date and go back you're welcome all the tips I'm just giving them out you're welcome another project is this one now anyone that's watched blanket stack go watch blanket stack um, you'll have seen this blanket it doesn't have a name it reminds me of Tetris though so I think I'm probably gonna call it Tetris and what I did is um, this blanket as most of my blankets all have a story and I went through a breakup that hit me like really really hard and I didn't really have a whole heap of money but I did have a whole heap of yarn so I decided to pick out the colours and make the squares and stick them together like this in like this colour effect and it goes from the spectrums of like pink and blue through to the greens and then there's like a neon pop there and then you've got the grey and the black and there's brown and there's peach and there's yellow and there's orange and it's absolutely fabulous and I've been meaning to finish it for the longest time and I haven't and I actually I haven't been too bad and I've sewn most of the ends in like there's a fair few on the back but it's not it's not the end of the world <laughs> it's a really bad joke but it's you know there's worse things right now so and I know I used a 3.5 mil hook because I left a note with this you could always attach a label as well with it on if like this was just folded up in a stack so I just put a label on 3.5 mil and then I know and I've got a bag of yarn with all of these colors bagged up so that I can finish it and square it off so that edge is square that edge is square that edge isn't so I've got like one and a half edges to finish off so you could do the same grab your stash and then start making squares and then join as you go that one needs a little slip stitch the join as you go so it's really really simple and it's really really effective and it's purely stash I really like it actually I think one of the things that I was querying with myself like what colour do I do as a border because I don't have any of this yarn left. I was using up all stash. Um, somebody did recommend black, but I think I put black in here. No, I didn't. I didn't put black or white in here, so I could round it off with either. Again, I don't have any, well, not a substantial amount of black and definitely not a substantial amount of white anymore, but I could always buy a border color to finish that off it looks gorgeous really really proud of this I started this in it's when I first moved out so 20 wow that long ago I'm gonna say I think it was like September 2016 yeah so four year almost four years on and I haven't finished it so I am going to add, well I've added it into my queue of whips because I think it's got like about, I'm going to say a conservative estimate of about 10 hours worth of granny squares and I think, I think if I really crack on I'll probably do it in about 5 but then it's got square, um, the ends and I think the ends will take a fair while because most of the ends at the back haven't been sewn in so maybe after 10 to 20 hours worth of work this will be done and for the amount of work I've put in it that'd be great and then this is a blanket that's fully usable oh I'm so proud of myself 
If you go back to the very early days on my Instagram, this is the background. Because I used to use whatever blanket I was working on as the background for the pictures I was taking. But then now I don't really make blankets, well I hadn't made blankets for a while. Um, I've been making garments, whereas now I'm making everything. So that's another batch of inspiration for you. It looks so good. Um, and then you can always make blankets like these. So this was just, I think they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They are 16 round granny squares. And then I've quite simply joined them with one row of black. Um, and I think I made like six giant squares. Um, and that was a quick make for my granddad who was in a care home. And then when he passed away, the blanket came back to me. You could easily do that. I just picked any old colours. This one I fondly call my ugly blanket because it doesn't go in any way. It clashes. It's terrible. And then I don't think you're going to be able to see. Put them up there out of me. This one is another blanket to finish. These are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 round granny squares and I did them all in the same colours so the squares don't repeat each other, like no two squares are the same but they all use the same colour palette so they've got all the pinks, the purples and the navy and then I joined them together in navy and if you again have like a complimentary swatch, swatch, stash, swatch of yarn you could make something like that, or like this, or like this, or you could chop it all up and you can make something like <laughs> this. There are so many options and I cannot wait to see what you're working on Tribe. So whatever Granny Square projects you make, whether it's for blankets or cushions or wearables or just for the sake of it tag me with hddc granny calm so i can see them and i will let you know how i get on with these blankets so i hope that's given you some inspiration for some stash diving um i am finding so much joy like so much right now from these projects and especially rediscovering whips that have sat for so long purely because I felt like I haven't got the time or not wanted to give my time to it and now we all have quite a bit of time and so these projects are getting finished I really like this one it's been a long time since I've had this out and now I'm just wow and that whew. AK Tribe so I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you wherever you are in the world stay safe and happy making moments and memories Bye tribe.